Hello there ladies and gentlemen, this is Orphan Last, aka Skylar Madison, and today I'm going to show you how you can use Blender in a way that can assist you in your process of making a comic book if that's something that you're interested in. Now you don't necessarily have to know a whole lot about Blender, for example, I don't necessarily know a whole lot about Blender, but like, uh, this is kind of really helpful. For example, if I, uh, just go ahead and turn on viewport shading, you have kind of an idea, as long as you have a light source in a location that you want, you have an idea idea of where the shadows should be. Uh, it, it doesn't seem like it's the most accurate thing in the world, but it's, it's at least somewhat accurate. There are ways of using EV, which is an onboard sort of live rendering system, and that's cool and everything like that, but I, I, it's something that's just a little bit above my skill level at this point in time. And, you know, this isn't a bad place to be if you're learning Blender, where you're using it to augment your experience while drawing, so that your sketch is the 3D model, okay? So, yeah, wow, look at, look at how weird the shading can get here. But let me go ahead and uh, go like this. Okay, so now I already recorded all of this footage, to be honest. And then I realized that, oh boy, for some reason, the last Windows update made it so that I didn't record any of the audio. So I'm having to re-record this segment of the video. So basically what you're able to do is you're able to get panel one, okay? And so what I want is a guy walking out of a door now the camera itself okay so the camera is over here it is quite a ways away from the scene so if I press zero you know it's it's got this aerial view now you might not want that aerial view I I, I want the camera to be something like right here okay and what I'm able to do is I'm able to press Control alt zero okay and that brings the camera right where I want it right where my viewport was so like if I'm looking at this like the camera is currently right here okay so if I want the camera to be looking at this palm tree I press Control alt zero and we can actually see that it's right there now you may think well wait a second here I was able to see more I was able to see more of this well what you can do is you you select the camera now if you don't have the camera selected currently basically let me just deselect everything now you can select the camera here or you can just find the camera inside of your collections and and select it or you can press zero and just select the border here and it'll be selected let's just go ahead and tinker with that once you have the camera selected you have this object data properties okay so this icon that looks like a camera itself okay this is where it's at. Now, there are ways of setting things to be a panoramic and making things look like a panoramic image, and that would be interesting to do, but currently I, I don't know how to do that, even though, you know, I'm able to change this from perspective to panoramic. You would think that if I set the focal length to being 180 or something, eventually I would be able to, things would start to curve instead of it looking like I'm zooming out of the scene. So this doesn't make much sense to me, but you are able to kind Kind of change the field of view that you have and so this might be exactly what I might want and what I'm able to do as long as I have the camera selected which I do I'm able to press R and I, I'm able to give it a Dutch angle I can press Z and kind of change my uh, my view a little bit just by moving my mouse so maybe I might want to have an angle like that and so R Y uh, that's that's more Dutch angle stuff X is more looking up and down sort of thing uh, but of course you know this all all depends on where this thing's origin is as well and the origin appears to be right here which is which is good okay so basically what I do in order to uh, or at least throughout the time that I was working on the comic strip what I do is I press Control alt 0 and then I basically just get the field of view that I want okay and I typically just keep it at panoramic because I like panoramics even though this isn't really working with curve linear sort of stuff going on if somebody knows how to get the curvilinear effect, the fisheye effect, then feel free to leave a comment in the video description below on how I can achieve that. And then once I get get to this point, what I'm able to do is I go into render properties, and it's uh, 
an image of a camera and you know you can go ahead and play with all of this stuff if you know what it is I think you know I should have maybe activated ambient occlusion maybe that might have made the actual renders look better I'll, yeah I'll try that and then we go to render up here render image make sure you don't do render animation otherwise uh, it's gonna try to render a bunch of empty frames and there's no point in doing that unless you're making an animation so render image and uh, we can see that this is what we currently got but that doesn't look quite right okay well uh, I guess the field of view if, if it doesn't look right you just change the focal length I guess and uh, the position of, of your camera if you need to and so render render image okay so now we have this and we have an idea as to how the shadow should look I guess the ambient occlusion didn't quite work uh, that's something that I still need to work on uh, maybe I need to research more into that and then uh, you go image save as and you find the file and, and location that you want you give the the file a name evidently it's a PNG you just go ahead and name it and then you press save as then you go ahead and go into your 2d drawing software you create a document with the dimensions that you want and then you find one of the snapshots that you've taken and you just click and drag it into the scene and you know you go ahead and, and create your your general layout your panel layout and you figure things out that way now one thing that's kind of cool with affinity photo at least uh, what I'm able to do in order to help make my panel layout is with my shapes my uh, my custom shapes here I can go for a rectangle okay and I'm able to just go like that and I, I can place it where I want it and so let's say I have a panel that's something more like that and sometimes you might need to get a different camera angle and play with the focal length and everything in order to get the picture that you want to have inside of the frame that you've just created here okay so this this shape that I just barely turned red that is that is the frame that is the whole picture so how do we get this image into it well we go ahead and we uh, stagger it into this shape okay that I created so we can see that beach one which is the image that I created is inside of it you can see that it's getting clipped uh, whenever it reaches the edges so maybe I might need to resize this a little bit and oh maybe that might work right there just like that you know you do that accordingly with each panel you just create a new panel and then create another shape and maybe you might want a panel over here and then let's go ahead and just plant in another image into it and so so on and so forth this is basically how it works so if you wanted to have a close-up you can go ahead and just kind of zoom in on on the scene a little bit or, or what have you you can use a different snapshot uh, I have a number of different snapshots that I created for this comic strip and so let's go on and get into the drawing process okay so I start out the speed paint this is after I've gone ahead and gotten a good look at what I kind of want in the visual storytelling and uh, I've planted in all of my camera angles the snapshots that I've taken of the three-dimensional scene and that is my sketch and what you see me doing right here is I'm drawing out all of these lines the, that are dealing with perspective and extending them out into the distance and that is helping me figure out where my perspective grid should be. Now using this technique in order to have a, a basic sketch of everything that you want to draw inside of your comic book it is a speed boost and everything but I do recommend that you at least have some sort of working knowledge of perspective and of course it's all up to you as to how advanced you want your 3d model to be and everything like that uh, and I really didn't have the most advanced 3d model uh, I didn't even have a, a door here and so I, I wound up drawing that just uh, all on my own I don't I don't necessarily need to have those details in the 3d model it would have been nice if I did but um, I, I probably need to figure out how to do texture modeling and all of that in order to go ahead and, and make it worth my while, especially with the windows. Uh, I wound up spending a lot of time making these windows and in the end I could barely even see them inside of the uh, snapshots that I wound up taking and uh, all of that good stuff. Uh, but just to kind of continue a thought that I was uh, mentioning earlier. 
I really recommend that you actually have a working knowledge of perspective. Uh, this should not be a crutch for you. Uh, you, this is just a sketch, uh, and you're able to build upon the sketch. Uh, and I don't, I don't feel as though this beginning step is really cheating or anything like that, or tracing even, because ultimately I made the 3D models. I can use my 3D model any way I want. And I guess some people may say, well, uh, why it takes longer to, to make the 3D model where it kind of does depend on how many scenes you have. If you're making a comic book or just a comic strip or something, uh, like take Kelvin and Hobbes, for example. If you have a comic strip on a monthly or a weekly basis or something like that, and uh, it's always inside of Kelvin's house most of the time, uh, well, you might want to have a 3D model of the house that might actually help you out. If it's a full-fledged comic book and you have people inside of like a spaceship like the Millennium Falcon all the time, yeah, you might want to have a, a 3D model of the Millennium Falcon so that you make sure that everything is consistent. Or at the very least, use a whole bunch of camera angles that are already established inside of the movies and plant those in your panel layout in order to help you out. But at that point, it might be a little bit of cheating, but then again, comic book artists do it all the time, all the way to the point to where it's it's getting to the point to where it's ridiculous. Uh, uh, there are some comic book artists that are just using Google Images, and they're using uh, fan art, even uh, like actual 3D models that people have have modeled and then they have actually like it's not quite like a star destroyer for example but it's like their own version of a of a star destroyer and what they want it to look like and these comic book artists they don't realize that it's not theirs and it's not the right kind of star destroyer and yet they literally trace this fan art they they steal it and they're just planting it into these comic books and they're getting paid for it. Um, sometimes it's even like uh, someone makes these 3D printouts of these uh, th of these models that are from Star Wars and the comic book artists are getting so lazy to the point to where they're actually tracing out the stand that is holding an X-Wing or something like that with the X-Wing. They're not even using their brain in the process. So if you created it, or if you personally even purchased it, the 3D model, in those specific instances, you I feel as though you've earned the right to use it as a sketch. Um, but if it's not yours, if you're just tracing and nothing more, then at that point you you need a you need to give credit to somebody else um, and not just yourself and and they need to get like if you're making money off of it then they need to be making money off of it too whoever it is that made it uh, I think it's getting a little bit overboard at this point especially with the Star Wars franchise in the comic books so just be aware of that Th these are the rules that I I at least think of um, they're they're there is a way that this can be considered cheating but the thing is is if let's say you're making a, a comic book for uh, Marvel DC or image comics or Dark Horse or something like that and you need to pop out a monthly comic book all the time and when you have actually finished uh, all your drawing here and there maybe you might want to uh, start making a 3d models here and there so that when you revisit the scenes that you've already drawn, uh, you know, you have those things available to you so that you can keep them consistent, consistently throughout the entire run of the comic book. And you might be popping out a comic book once a month for like years for this specific title. And, you know, it might be a really big help for you to, to actually have a 3D model as a tool to help you uh, meet your deadlines and everything like that <clears throat> and I don't see any problem with that I, I think that this is something that has the potential of being something great uh, for people as a, a little resource for them and all that good stuff
and uh, you know I this took forever just this one panel right here uh, you can actually see I included a, a quarter inch joint in between each and every single stone because I'm a glutton for punishment evidently uh, at this point, I, I needed to up the resolution a little bit, so panel one, it, you know, most of it wound, winds up being kind of uh, lower resolution than the rest of the image, but uh, I needed a higher resolution primarily because there was too few pixels for me to draw my character in a way that looked at least somewhat compelling. Now, I don't actually have a story planned out for, for this little comic strip. This is mainly just a, a presentation on how you can do it. And one of the requests for this last Patreon drawing request was, do something interesting with perspective. Now, they, they, they were thinking more so along the lines of curvilinear perspective, but I guess I just have a lack of imagination. I guess I, I, I can't really think of... Uh, a interesting panoramic perspective sort of thing. I, I guess I can kind of sort of think of something, but it's m maybe not the subject matter that I would normally think of for uh, a really elaborate camera angle with curvilinear perspective. But I am doing something interesting with perspective nonetheless. I'm showing how, how you can actually use 3D software to help you out. This is the interesting part with the perspective and how I'm incorporating that request into uh, the story request for the picture. Now, if you guys, uh, and I'm, I'm speaking to the patrons right now, if the patrons uh, can think of, uh, you know, some sort of narration, a char a character thought bubbles and, and such like that, maybe he talks to the tree or something, uh, if you can think of a story and you were to give me a, a comic book script for panel one, panel two, panel three, uh, panel four, and panel five, or what have you, then, yeah, you know, whoever comes up with the best script for this, the more hilarious or ridiculous, uh, the more stupid you can make the character, I think the better, um, then yeah, I, I'll go ahead and, and include that story. I don't finish it inside of this image. I get 99% of all of the line work finished, but I don't actually uh, color it. So uh, next month I'm going to have the coloring and I'm going to have all of the text on, on the screen or in the image as well, the story. It, that is if you guys want to participate, if the patrons want to participate. Um, as for the rest of the audience, uh, I'm, I, I'm not going to really um, be able to make the story what you might want it to be, but if you guys want to come up with your own little script for panel one, panel two, panel three, and all that, then feel free to do so. Now. Um, and I might actually mention it inside of the next video, and I, I think that'd be funny. Uh, kind of different renditions of, of it. Now, inside of a comic book, you would be surprised how often the comic book artists don't draw a background. And I actually have uh, a number of videos that I recorded a few uh, weeks ago, actually maybe a month ago, and, uh, you know, I'm actually looking at comic books made by Frank Miller and everything like that. Uh, uh, even Jim Lee and a bunch of other great comic book artists. And I'm, I'm kind of analyzing how the comic book panels are drawn out, when they have a background, when they don't, what things I admire out of their artwork, and everything like that. Uh, you know, I've been debating about whether or not releasing those videos at all, but after having drawn this image and while I'm editing together this video, I'm actually thinking, yeah, you know, I, I should probably make that. Uh, just edit those videos and, and pop them out. Uh, there's there's a lot of uh, videos out there artist reacts to, and that probably gets them a lot of clicks, and I don't know if I'll use necessarily that specific thing. Like I said, inside of my year, in my th th third year in retrospect video, um, I'm not really that interested in clickbait. I, I want 
to just grab people's attention purely on the merit of my artistic skill and etc. Now here, you, you know, this palm tree, it just doesn't look good. It is tempting to just go into, you know, uh, just tracing mode and, and do a really sloppy job. Uh, this is this is what it looks like when you just trace. Tracing is garbage. You have to be thinking about it as a sketch. I mean, look at that. It looks like garbage. You see me trying to refine it, and then you just saw me just delete uh, all of it, and now I'm treating it like a sketch. I'm being very careful about my line work, and when you treat it like a sketch, it'll look right. When you treat it like something that you just need to trace, it's going to look like garbage every single time. And, uh, you know, with the final panel of the page, I actually spent extra, extra time on the coconut tree. And I'm, I'm really happy with how this image is coming out, actually. Uh, maybe not so much with the, the me and how I've drawn the, the character uh, from panel to panel, uh, but I think it, it still grabs people's attention in some way or another. You guys will be able to see how all of the line work has come out so far. Like I said, I'm 99% of the way done. All that needs to be done is on the final panel, I need to actually just draw out the character in the final panel. And he's going, going to be in a different pose than the initial attempt that I had at this Patreon drawing request. Uh, I don't know if you guys recall, it all depends on how often you guys watch my videos and uh, all of that stuff, but you know, I had him more in a, in a relaxed sort of pose, uh, shooting at the bananas. Uh, this I'm thinking about ramping it up to 10 billion, you know, over 9,000 or something, where uh, he's like really getting into shooting that coconut tree with both hands and with this angry look on his face, or maybe half of his face is covered up by both of his hands pointed up and everything, but an angry look on his eyes and all that. And uh, I'm, I'm really hoping that from panel to panel, from panel two to panel three, it actually communicates that he's jumping uh, from that little ledge, uh, like the house is on top of that ledge and everything. And you see here, I, I'm actually uh, just using uh, some rough perspective to kind of help me kind of figure out the angle of the hand. And then once I have the angle of the hand right, uh, and I think I just used two vanishing points and kind of eyeballed the the direction of the uh, the other um, where the other lines should go, and I, I was able to figure out the geometry and how the gun would be held with the hand in that specific pose. Now, in the previous video where I attempted this uh, Patreon drawing request uh, for my patrons, of course. Keep in mind that I, I made this character a little bit chubby. He, he's, done, he's not fat, uh, so he, he hasn't really quite grown out a whole bunch of fat so that he has like uh, a bunch of different chins and such, but uh, he does have a little bit of extra weight on him, so uh, some of his more action poses look a little dumpy because he is a little bit dumpy. Uh, yeah, right here on the screen right here, I kept running into problems where I accidentally kept on selecting my perspective grid and it was getting kind of ridiculous. It was getting really large and it was actually getting to the point where it was freezing up my computer. Uh, like really large as in like I had one of my vanishing points uh, being something like 16 to 50 times bigger than my actual canvas, off canvas as well. And every time that I would select it, it would freeze, and then I, I, I tried rasterizing it, and then it just kind of froze in this one specific spot. And I was just thinking, what if I just lock the layer? And that seemed to have solved the problem. And here I'm working on the final panel, it looks like, and I wanted to do some nice refinements for this specific panel. To just do a really nice job, and uh, I really did treat it like a sketch, okay? Um, and I, I don't know how to really say it other than that. Uh, 
because I mean it's it's a really nice looking sketch I couldn't really see everything so I kind of struggled a little bit with that uh, but yeah in in the next video in this series I will be uh, finishing up the last little final touches with uh, the line work and all that now you can see I, I did some nice fine refinements uh, for each and every single leaf more so than I did with the other panels I didn't think the other panels since they were so small I didn't really think that drawing out each and every single little spike to each and every single leaf was quite necessary whereas this was the largest panel and it's the the panel that has the the most action and the most emphasis and uh, you know I started getting having difficulty where different parts of each leaf were uh, kind of colliding with one another and one way to make sure that you can see the differences from a previously drawn out leaf uh, to another uh, to know which parts to erase and such is first you draw each of your leaves on a different layer and occasionally merge them into one another uh, but uh, basically you apply a gradient map which changes the color of the one that you're currently working on and so where they wind up colliding and one of the leaves winds up looking a little bit transparent you wind up erasing those little tidbits and such and maybe some people can tell that uh, with the final version of this that it was created with a 3d model and such and uh, I don't really care because if it looks good and uh, you know in the end it's all handcrafted I don't really have a problem with that um, you know if the comic book artists are getting away with copyright infringement then I can get away with something that definitely is not copyright infringement and uh, yeah so one of the things that I, I'm doing here some people that have been following my channel they've heard me say I'm trying to get away from grayscale painting and yet you know this does look like it's grayscale you know I have the background primarily throughout most of the video uh, set to gray and I also am kind of shading things in gray now that that shading is a multiply layer and yes it is a gray however I can select variously different parts of it and apply a, a recolor uh, sort of adjustment layer to it and uh, one thing that I want to uh, kind of point out as well no one is going to pay attention to each and every single one of your stones like on the left side of the building in every single one of my panels I have some really elaborate stone masonry and no one is going to pay attention to each and every single stone and try to pay attention to whether or not the exact same stones are on panel one as in panel two as in panel three to panel five okay no one's going to be paying attention to that uh, so I didn't really feel the necessity to keep going to my previous panels and and kind of hmm yeah you know I wonder hmm, what did I do there it doesn't matter it, it, the minutia of detail it, it doesn't need to be there all that I'm really communicating is this building on the left side has stone masonry these arches have stone masonry and the right side of the building has stucco and that'll become more clear in the next video in the series and uh, yeah uh, really you have to kind of think what is essential for the storytelling and if the details that you're drawing aren't essential to that storytelling then you don't really need to pay too much attention to it so this is panel one and then boom panel two he's running from the building and then he jumps over here I think I might actually draw out some motion lines and such like that to kind of communicate that he jumped and then he's he's showing his angry face and then you know he's gonna be shooting at the coconuts 
with a really angry look on his face, but I don't have him drawn out yet. But, you know, as I said, most of it is. Anyways, guys, that pretty much concludes it for this video. If you guys enjoyed it, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And if you guys would like to get more notifications from me or have more participation with my community, feel free to join me on Twitter or go ahead and join my Discord. The link is in the video description below for both of them. If you'd like to support my channel, feel free to click on my mascot in the upper right corner of the screen. It leads to my Patreon. And if you've enjoyed this content, feel free to click on anything that's appearing on the screen right now. Thank you very much for your time.